it's no longer news that august 1st the youths are planning to do a nationwide massive protest first of all federal government is still using intimidation to stop the youth from protesting secondly they accuse peter obi for engineering the protest then thirdly now they see that there's nothing that will work out that this thing is like unknown faces but the youths are in general agreement of the protest now Tunuba have come out to appeal that uh, they should quench the protest but he's not bringing anything to the table what he's bringing to the table is that he is working that is why he he allowed the minimum wage to be passed into law what is minimum wage Seventy thousand naira minimum wage what is that how many percentage of of the government of the of the nigerian population that is working as civil servants how many what we really need is reduction of fair price then everything will fall in place yeah. The idea is the, 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 the population of Nigeria, uh, uh, the Nigerian populace that is working in government uh, parastata are not up to 10%. So, what impact is it? And come to think of it, this minimum wage issue will make increase again because market women will increase their produce because the, the civil servants have gotten their money increased. So the best bit was to, to reduce fuel. Now they are talking about subsidies. Where, where is the money of the subsidy? Where is the entry? You know. So for me, though the protest also, if you protest after the protest, what happens? It comes business as usual. So the whole thing is is just let the government sit up and help the masses. That's all. We need we need reduction of fuel, quenching of insecurity, and power supply. Those are the three things. If government could provide this, all our problems will be, will be drastically subsidized. So just uh, listen to what uh, the Tunubu sent his uh, foot soldiers to tell us about the the the, the pending uh, protest. Just listen and drop a comment in the description, guys. President Bola Tinubu has urged young protesters to cancel their planned demonstrations, assuring them that the government is actively addressing their concerns. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, conveyed this message after a meeting with the President at the State House. He emphasized that President Tinubu takes the grievances of the youth seriously. Idris highlighted the government's recent actions, such as the swift, swift approval of a new national minimum wage by the National Assembly, as proof of the president's commitment to improving the country's future. This appeal comes amid growing public discontent and calls for nationwide protests next month in response to economic hardship and policy decisions. We also discussed the issue of the country generally and uh, Mr. President has asked me to again I inform Nigerians that he listens to them, uh, especially the young people that are trying to, uh, to protest. Mr. President is listening to them, uh, he, he takes what they say seriously and is working as seriously to ensure that this country is good not just for today but also for the future. Um, the issue of the planned protest, uh, Mr. President does not see any need for that, he has, he's asked them to, uh, to shove that plan. Uh, he's asked them to uh, await government's uh, uh, response to all their pleas. He has listened to them, like I said, and a lot is happening. Only today, the National Assembly has expeditiously uh, passed the new national minimum wage. You can see how the president is working. It was transmitted only yesterday. Today, it has been passed. A lot of other uh, interventions that the president has also put in place um, are also going to be looked at uh, expeditiously in the interest of Nigeria. So there's no need for, tr for strike. The young people uh, out there should listen to the president and allow the president more time to see to the realization of all the goodies he has for them. Well, the Rise News analyst Dash Bali joins us now to discuss President Tinubu's appeal for a stay of action on the planned nationwide anti-hardship protest. Good afternoon, Mr. Shibwale. Many thanks for being here. It's a pleasure of being here as usual. Of course, great to have you as always. Of course, we heard an excerpt there saying that the president doesn't see any need for a protest, but this is not, he's on the receiving end. So even though he's making, the, all these moves are being made by this administration, if they're not being felt by the Nigerian people and they feel the need to protest, is this the right approach for the government to take in terms of... Which one are you talking about? Is it the government or the protest? Which one is the right approach? I'm asking you if this <laughs> call for the president, by the president saying that the that Nigerians youth should, Nigerian youth should shelve the protests, mm -hmm. is this the right call to make? Of course, it is. 
Um, how do I put it? It is he is at his wit's end. It has end. He's literally begging. You get me? Because um, he knows what is on the ground. And he's a political leader, he's a democratic leader. He must respond to the wishes of those who put him in power. So it is in order for him to plead and beg, which is what he's doing. Does that answer your first question? Next one. <laughs> All right, uh, um, Mr. Shofale. Yeah. Now, my question is that you know, protest is of course uh, a legal and constitutional means in any democracy to express your dissatisfaction or to advocate for something. Uh, why is this one so contentious? And it's, how else well, will? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it is contentious because the planner said they will be on strike for ten days. Huh. That's an insurrection or uprising. If you want to protest, you go out on the street, you do it lawfully with the uh, protection of the police, and you go back home. For, for 10 days, it's like seizing the state. But no government will allow that. Is there a constitutional provision for how Every, long protests should that's last? That's right. No. If a protest goes on for 10 days, uh, it, it is contravening the constitution. People don't have right of movement. People don't right, have right to go to work. People don't have so many things that they have to do. In case you do not know, I've had some people say that if protesters get near them, they will protect their property. And the Inspector General of Police have said that people have right of protest, they will protect them. But if they vandalize public property, the law will take its course. In a democracy, the right of dissent is inherent, it is constitutional. You get me? Whether it's a fundamental right of nature too, that your own freedom, hence you have my nose begins. All right, Mr. Yes. Shabale, given <clears throat> Nigeria's current economic challenges, how yeah. realistic are President Tinubu's promises to address youth grievances? Because in truth, what we usually hear from those who speak for the president is be patient. But to appeal for patience without a timeline, it just, it, it does not, it doesn't seem to sit well with the youth. Uh, if, uh, if soccer, political soccer, is not coming in a timorous, timely manner, people get frustrated. That is why they are protesting. It is their right. And it is the duty of government to make sure that their hunger and anger are appeased. That is why this president is pleading. I pity him. He is pleading. But you see, the Yoruba have is saying that uh, uh, the stilt of the tiger it's not a sign of cowardice. But, see, when you talk of steel, you talk of something being done in secrecy. This man is pleading for understanding and support, especially understanding first that in spite of all his efforts, things are not coming out positively as he expected. That was what the Minister of uh, uh, Information was trying to say. You know all the efforts that are put on the ground. Huh. But well, these things, like I always say, they don't dominate in a day. You get me? Their work has been done over the years, inherited by them. I mean, I'm not the one to hold bridge for any government. But it is the duty of any government to cater for its people. And at the same time, it is the duty of any government to make sure that the rule of law prevails and that nobody uses force to vandalize property or to intimidate government. Let's leave it at that for now. Uh, some people are saying that in his time as an activist, uh, he was allowed to protest at length and express his wishes and those of his colleagues, uh, you know, uh, to, to great lengths. So, uh, you know, now the roles are reversed. What's your take on, you know, this ironic situation we uh, find ourselves that is in? metamorphosis. You see, you seek power. You know how you seek power. You plead with people. You protest against the government of the day. Like, uh, you know, you protest seriously against the government, and then you don't have time on your side and all that. And then, when you get power, other people protest against you. Ah, that is uh, policies, that's democracy. You get me? And that's activism. But it must be done within the ambits of the law. No property must be destroyed. And I carry the length of it. Look, there are protests, like Netanyahu is in the U.S., there will be protesters every year he goes. But they don't sleep on the street. They don't say they will do it for 10 days. No. 
You put us on our knees, you and go. Don't sit on the street and paralyze government. Okay. That's not democracy. All right, Mr. Shabali, we, yeah. with this administration, I think we have had you here acknowledging that we've seen a lot of trial and error um, in terms of policies and uh, uh, that, have, that have basically led us to where we are today. Would you, if you could advise the government from your perspective to have a rethink, a different approach in order to move things forward, would you have any suggestions that you would give them? The only suggestion is that you move faster. They have all the palliatives, economic, socioeconomic, health, infrastructure, all they have put, you know, all, all, everything in the fire is for it to, to become some good broth of food that will go around and palliate the hunger and anger of people. Time, like I've always said, and you misquoted me to that, but like I always said, <laughs> As I always said, time is not on the side of government. And that is why government is pleading. Government should not be pleading. Government should make policies. <laughs> but this uh, Mr. President is pleading. Get me? It's pleading. So they don't let us use force to react to whatever I say. Nobody will enjoy anarchy. Uh, remember how uh, SARS ended? Our properties were destroyed. Good intention protesters, youths, came out. But the, the thing was hijacked and had hoodlums and had vandalism. No government can fold the sand and allow that to happen. No police system can fold the sand and allow that to happen. Let protesters protest. Legitimately, uh, logically, in any way. But don't sleep on the streets and not vandalize uh, uh, government property because we all use government property anyway. And even private property as well. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, I guess the onus is on uh, the, the police to ensure that uh, this protest is uh, managed uh, in, in a way that ensures that everybody else can uh, can carry on. Sleep away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Right. Shobowale, thank you so uh, much you. for your time and your input. Uh, we do always enjoy having you on the phone.